the City of Grand Forks, proud home of the University of North Dakota City Council meeting, Monday, January, Tuesday, 21st, 2020, is hereby called to order. Welcome and roll call. Weigel? Danny, are you on the phone? Not, Not yet. yet. Okay. Uh, Dockler? Here. Weber? Here. Mock? Here. Marshall? Sandy? Here. Dean? We have a quorum. Thank you. Under item two, Awards presentation, or number 1.2 is Mayor's announcements. I want to remind everybody to drive safely. The roads are very slippery. And I want to congratulate and commend those public works crews for keeping the streets very clean and open. But be careful around the corners because the snow is higher than the cars coming at you. And item two, awards presentations, appointments and proclamations, 2.1 is, is. Oh, go ahead. Uh, presentation, welcoming community roadmap. I would like to congratulate the welcoming community roadmap on the one year anniversary of their efforts and I've been pleased to see the progress that's been made just this past year and I'm excited to see the work they're doing moving forward. It's great to live in a community that cares and I see this as a prime example of community engagement bettering the lives of the people in Grand Forks. We in Grand Forks want to be not just the best community to be from but also to come to. Striving to make Grand Forks a place where there are equal economic opportunities and equal access to services for all residents, new or established, are goals worth working for. And I commend those leading the effort for taking those goals head on. And I welcome Rob and David. All right. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor Brown. All right. I wanted to, before we start with the presentation on what we've been up to for the past year, uh, take a moment to be able to recognize the people who are here attending with us. The Welcoming Community Roadmap is an effort that's being uh, carried out by over 30 different organizations across Grand Forks. And we owe gratitude to Mayor Brown, to council members for their support of this effort, and across the community for all of the institutions that are working on these. Uh, many of them are, some of them are here with us. There are multiple meetings going on tonight that are taking people in different directions. Uh, but I wanted to take some time to recognize um, all of the people, if, if you'd be willing to stand up, um, those of you who have been involved in some capacity, meetings and initiatives. Yes. Thank you, uh, thank you so much. All right, when I came and spoke with you all about a year or so ago, I talked about the Welcoming Community Roadmap as being a project that sends off sparks, that not only is it these official 78 initiatives that were endorsed by council just over a year ago, but also the additional work that that inspires in the community with new initiatives, new conversations once these matters are on the table. And so doing our best to track that when it really gets to be um, unwieldy in the very best way when it takes on that sort of movement in the community has been a lot of what we've been trying to work on in this past year. And with that, um, there have been a number of uh, very interesting, fun events, others, you know, more standard meetings, working on policy issues. And by the end of that first year, we have accomplished 20 of the initiatives in that roadmap. Remember, it's a five-year strategic plan, and so it's spaced out over the course of those five years. 20 have already been implemented or completed in that first year, with 17 different institutions carrying out those different initiatives. Um, and beyond that, we also have another 30 that are underway right now, being carried out by 20 different institutions. So a lot that's happening in the community by a lot of, a lot of people who are working together on these efforts and um, arts community, um, medical service providers all across Grand Forks. One of those initiatives that we've been working on recently are focus groups and surveys working to better engage UND student populations. All of the initiatives in the roadmap are aimed at making sure that whatever newcomers bring to Grand Forks, they're able to then bring to the benefit of the community. And UND students are definitely a key part of that effort. Uh, so we've been having focus groups, engagement activities uh, with UND students. Those will be continuing into this year as well. Uh, the Cooking Up Cultures event that was held last spring, right at the start of construction season, offered some really great opportunities to expand cultural connections in Grand Forks, while also benefiting the area businesses that were just about to face a difficult summer with um, road construction issues. One of the newest events that we held, which was just about two weeks ago, and we'll be watching a video on that shortly, is a workforce initiative. And this is a series of, of two events that are, are being 
held by the Grand Forks Human Resource Association, Job Service, the Chamber, Grand Forks Region Economic Development, all true, and the City of Grand Forks, aimed at making sure that we can match the, the needs and assets of, of the employers in the region. Uh, we know workforce is one of the biggest issues in being able to, to grow the economy in Grand Forks. And so this is one of the examples of the efforts that are helping to match um, those needs with specifically immigrant workforces. The first uh, session that we had was a panel with with immigrant employees themselves. The second panel will be held with immigrant Im with employers of immigrants. And that was attended by 70 uh, people uh, a couple of weeks ago. In addition to the initiatives of the Welcoming Community Roadmap, the Welcoming Projects is, is being used to leverage other pieces, other efforts in the community. Um, in meeting with Mayor Brown, one of the priorities that he mentioned was the, the census. And so I'm serving also on the executive committee of the um, Census Com Complete Count Committee. And that will help us to reach more of the traditionally undercounted populations in Grand Forks and also conducting a variety of speaking engagements to be able to tell the story of what's happening in Grand Forks um, within the city, regionally and uh, nationally, hearing some really great things um, about the kind of work that we're doing and putting it in that context, um, that what's, what's happening in Grand Forks really is something, uh, something special. And so we've taken the Welcoming Community Roadmap on the road in a variety of communities. And one of the newer um, efforts, too, that will be ongoing this winter is a, a new um, resident engagement or resident experience walkthroughs in which I've taken a group of people on a walkthrough of City Hall and ended up in council chambers to get their experience as an average resident. What do they see? What do they feel when they walk into City Hall? Do they know where to go? What kinds of barriers might, in, might be in place um, for their full interaction with with local government, for instance, do they know what to do? Is the, are there ways that we can um, change the, the council experience so that they can, can participate or feel more comfortable there? That kind of feedback is then being uh, provided in a report as it, as it grows that will be used in consideration for the, the renovation efforts that are happening in, in City Hall. And we're also tracking social media efforts. We have um, over 100,000 impressions through the GF Welcomes efforts within the Public Information Center City uh, Facebook page, um, as well as others who are using that through the community. So a number of, of more fun, engaging kind of social events that are going along with these, with these pieces too. Um, year two is going to be the biggest year of, of the efforts in the roadmap. Uh, the, the first year was focused mainly on implementation, startup, and getting traction with those first 20 initiatives. Um, the biggest uh, bulk of them are, are falling within year two, and so the, the committee is looking at ways to help support the agencies that are doing that work and, and make sure that we're able to keep up that momentum because this is a, this is a big year for, for welcoming. Um, and with that, too, as we move into the later years, we have further opportunities to track outcomes and track additional metrics. There were a lot of things that you can't assess within that very first year, but that are coming more in the, in the later years. And so I have a short video that I'm going to show you regarding that collaboration with the various agencies around workforce specifically. And again, this is the first of a, a, a two, um, two panel series that will be held. Uh, we were very excited with having 70 people who came out for the first one and, and very eager to learn from employers in the second one too. When we started the welcoming project, what we really knew was that when you can match the needs and assets of employees with the needs and assets of employers, you can make an economy thrive. The workforce is the number one challenge in Grand Forks, in the region, and in North Dakota. Uh, we really need all, ha we need all hands on deck when it comes to workforce and helping to grow companies. Um, we need to do all that we can to, uh, to, to make sure that all populations within the community have the ability to work and contribute to the local economy. The reason why we're having these events in particular is because we recognize that when you get, can get employers together, when you can get employees together, you have a chance to learn. Uh, I know that we have uh, organizations and uh, maybe schools and other areas that they help 
immigrants to learn how to speak English, speak and write English, to do other stuff. Communication is the key, you know, in our in our livelihood, everything we do, work, I mean, whenever we, we, we live, even if when you're going to find an apartment, you have to really to be communicative. And events like this and initiatives like welcoming community roadmap are so important. I'm so proud of the community uh, to create a, a fertile ground where something like this can be successful and to really help um, all people feel welcome and to contribute uh, to our community. All right. Thank you. Questions? Well, a picture is worth a thousand words, and that was a beautiful and informative presentation. So I want to thank you for that. And then council comments? Anybody wish to, Mr. Weber? Um, what, what is the next step in terms of uh, workforce development uh, with, with local HR departments? Can you talk about that at all? Sure. Um, <coughs> excuse me. There are uh, quite a few initiatives within economic opportunities, one of the four goals of the Welcoming Community Roadmap. So the second panel is something that's going to be held um, sometime later this spring, and that will be one of the next steps there. There will also be an ongoing meetings with the, with the Chamber and EDC on, on a workforce master plan and, and how welcoming might be part of that as well. Mr. Sandy. Uh-oh. <laughs> there, that's better. Um, uh, Ms. David, thank you so much. Uh, it was a great presentation. It, uh, you can tell um, there's a, obviously a lot of passion, um, and the people that are working on the Welcoming Community Roadmap believe in what they're doing and are very excited about it. And I think it, it shows from the video and it shows uh, um, seeing all the good pictures and the amazing things that are going on. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit curious. At, so there were 20 initiatives that we worked on in the, in the first year. And how many organizations did we have engaged in those, in those initiatives? Uh, of, the, the of the completed ones, there were 17, 17 Se organizations. 17. And so presumably there's at least one person at each one of those organizations that, that are putting in time and effort on the Welcoming Community Roadmap. That's a Absolutely. lot of people working on this. It shows the commitment to, uh, by our community as to why it's important and, and how many people believe in the fact that Grand Forks should be a welcoming community. And, and uh, helping connect the dots with people. So I really appreciate everything you've been doing. Um, hopefully we can get more organizations involved in the future as well. Absolutely, thank you. Anyone else wish this? I'm so proud of this, we should take it on the road. <laughs> we should show it, because it's beautiful. Anything else? Well, thank you very right. much. Thank you. Thank you. Item three. <laughs> Item three is public hearings and second readings of ordinances, 3.1. Public hearing on petition to vacate public access and pedestrian walkway easement lying within Liqueur's edition. Open the public hearing on 3.1. Close the public hearing on 3.1. Council action on 3.1. If you look toward me, there's only one person down here. Good, so Mr. Yeah. All right, Mr. Sandy and then second Ms. Docker. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries, thank you. 3.2. Public hearing and second reading of ordinance relating to corrective amendment of street and highway plan to dedicate right away on Southern Estates 12th edition. Open the public hearing on 3.2. Close the public hearing on 3.2. Council action on 3.2. Mr. <coughs> Ms. Mock motions. Mr. Weber seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries, thank you. And then 3.3. Uh, public hearing and second reading of ordinance relating to corrective ordinance for annexation of Southern Estates 12th edition. Open the public hearing on 3.3. Close the public hearing on 3-3. Council action on 3-3. Mr. Weber motions. Mr. Mock seconds. All in favor say aye. Opposed? Carries. Thank you. Item 4, action item 2. would like action items pulled for discussion. I will pull 4.1. That leaves 4.0. 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 410, 411, and 412. Mr. Sandy, 48. Yes, sir. So that leaves 40, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 49, 410, 411, and 412 for council action. Mr. Weber motions. Ms. Docker seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. Thank you. Item 4.1. Appeal of 2017 value on the nine IRIT properties that are listed. Mr. Swanson. Mayor Brown, members of council, at the Committee of the Whole, the uh, 
committee heard presentations from both of the property owners representatives as well as the city assessor's office at that time the uh, committee made a recommendation to uphold the city assessor's true and full valuation for all of the properties since that time the assessor has prepared uh, proposed findings of fact and conclusions uh, the appropriate motion tonight if you uh, follow the recommendation from the Committee of the Whole, and then also uh, have had a chance to review the findings proposed by the assessor's office, would be to uphold the assessor's true and full value for each of the properties and to adopt the proposed findings of fact and conclusions and recommendations as presented from the assessor's office. Thank you. Council action. Mr. Weber motions. Ms. Dockler seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carries. Thank you. 4.8. Grand Forks Air Force Base Partnership Letter of Intent, Refuse and Recycling Services. Mr. Sandy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, uh, I've already asked uh, these questions of Mr. Phelan and others, so I already know the answers to them, but I think it's important that uh, we have this uh, information in the public. Mr. Phelan, um, the mechanism that we're going to be using for um, moving forward with a contract with the Air Force Base, what kind of an agreement would, would we ultimately have? Good. Mayor Brown and uh, Council President Sandy, um, right now we're asking tonight that you uh, approve a uh, letter of intent that we're interested enough to go to the next stage. Um, right now, um, and just so you know, the service we're providing, so what we want to do on the solid waste collection side, uh, we would use city forces to do that side of the operation, kind of integrate them into our city of Grand Forks in, in many ways into our routes. On the recycling side, we uh, our current contractor is waste management. And uh, this is the last year of their agreement in 2020, so we need to rebid that um, project. So um, if we move forward, they would be uh, integrated into that current agreement, but then we'd also incorporate them into the new bid. So um, whomever the new um, recycling, collection, and uh, marketing contractor, um, we would bid it in such a way that also have to include the Air Force Base. So that, that's how we would intend to move forward. Right now, um, I can't remember, it's somewhere in Colorado. There, um, there's the United States Air Force is doing a business case analysis, so they have to you know, justify that this is the best way to move forward. If that proves out that it's, it's, they think it's a good way forward for a contract with the city, um, what they would ask for is they'd come back to the city of Grand Forks with a service agreement uh, for us to re uh, further review. Um, I think they'd like to try to do this probably in the next three months, I would anticipate, and, um, and possibly by even starting in, in July, August, and worst case scenario, January 1st, 2021 is what we've worked on. Very good, Mr. Phelan. Um, why does the Air Force Base not have to bid, bid out this contract? How can they just sign a services yeah. agreement with the city of yeah. Grand Forks? Um, there was an initiative uh, several years ago that uh, with the United States Air Force is to try to um, privatize some of the utilities of which they have done, you know, their water, wastewater, gas, electrical has been privatized. And then the other move was to try to find um, city type services that are, are conducted on a base. Is there a way to integrate with the local community? And certainly we're 14 miles away, so it's not as easy as a lot of communities where the, the, the gate is right next to the city. But to find ways so the, the uh, Congress has allowed them to sign, um, we'll call it public-public partnership agreements to provide city type services and so there's not redundancy and they can use the city services and so essentially the Air Force can do what they do well um, and uh, we can help with some of their support services. So that was an issue. We always have, we have more challenges probably having service agreements in other communities just because we have this you know large distance, distance. Between, between us. So we thought this would be one. Every year they kind of bring us together to, to continue this. Are there some other partnerships we could work on? This is one that bubbled to the top that this actually we could bring to, to fruition. So we're at least at the letter of intent stage and serious enough where they're doing some detailed analysis. Sure, but uh, the Air Force Base, the United States government is not putting out an RFP that we are responding to. No, no, Correct. in this case, they're working it through their bureaucracy and they gotta do all the check marks with that, their community public partnership program. Right. And according to fe federal government rules, they can do an agreement with us there are no issues with that. Yes, I've been at a couple meetings where they um, they kind of talk through uh, their kind of plan that they have to go all the way through these these requirements to meet it, and so they, there seems to be a detailed checklist that they need to go through to to check all the boxes. Um, 
last thing I'm going to say, I mentioned this to Mr. Weber uh, earlier this week. I am very concerned about the next renewal with waste management. I believe, or at least I've got this feeling that the cost for recycling is going to go up significantly. And so um, I think it would be in our best interest to try to have the Air Force Base as some sort of an add-on so that we can clearly identify whether we're getting economies of scale by adding the base or it's actually costing us more for adding the base um, when, we, when we put that out for bid. Uh, Mayor Brown, Council President, I think that's a very good idea because these partnerships are not meant for the city or the local community to subsidize them. It has to be a win-win partnership. Otherwise, they shouldn't move forward. Even yeah, even right. they say that. I don't think the base would have a problem with that. No. So, yeah, right. uh, and because we have this 14 mile dis dif distance, we don't want the citizens of Grand Forks subsidizing the base, and nor would the uh, United States Air Force wouldn't want that either. Great. Thank you, Mr. Phelan. Mr. Mayor, I'll move. Forward. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second, Ms. Dockler? Any further discussion, just Mr. Swanson? Uh, just briefly, Mr. Phelan, in the context of discussing this. Not only do we have to be cognizant of what authority the air base would have to do it, I think we also have to take a look at what authority the city has, and we probably would have to do it in some form of intergovernmental agreement. Yeah. Uh, so it, we've got to look at it from both perspectives. Yeah. I don't know if that analysis has been done as to whether or not we've got the authority to extend that out that far. So. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with Mr. Sm it gives us time, not only their time, but our time to, to make sure. And this is just... Um, it's kind of like um, we bring other things to you and make sure we're serious enough to go down to that next step. And, and we think it's, there's something there that uh, we should go to the next step to do that. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. Thank you. We have no introductions to ordinance tonight. Item 5, informational items 5-1. Human Resources Quarterly Staffing Report. 5-2. And the investment portfolio was up 1231. Item 6, public comments. I have none. Item seven, approval of the minutes and bills, seven one. Vendor list as presented. Need a motion to second to pay the bills. Mr. Sandy motions. Ms. Mock seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed carries. Thank you. The bills are paid, 7.2. The minutes from December 16, 2019. Mm. Mr. Weber motions. Ms. Doctor seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed carries. Thank you. Item eight. City Administrator comments, Mr. Phelan. Uh, Mayor Brown, members of City Council, just a, a few updates on uh, what's going on. I've gotten some questions on a few things that I, I know this is the City Council, but the Jobs Development Authority approved, um, and we're planning. Uh, I spoke briefly to Mr. Uh, Mr. Weber as the as the president of the JDA. Probably two updates we'd like to bring you in February. Uh, one would be the regional market capture study that um, the the growth fund participated in uh, around of up to fifty thousand dollars and so we're the primary sponsor of that i think the total amount was about ninety thousand over two years and so we'd like to try at the uh, february jda meeting to provide an update on that the other thing that the uh, growth fund participated in up to twenty five thousand was uh, area Man analytics and that was with that uh, microsoft tech spark grant and um, i saw a presentation at the uh, most recent edc board meeting and i think there's some positives about what's come out of that and so those are two studies that this growth fund has participated up front and as a part of a, a larger partnership so we'd like to bring those two and provide some updates and uh, we'll try to get those on to the uh, february uh, jda meeting so you get some updates on those and where they're at uh, number two is um, the other thing i've gotten asked on is uh, um, I've mentioned that there's potentially some south end developments, we'll call it in and around 62nd Avenue South. And uh, we're planning at the next call meeting, which would be uh, next week, Monday, to um, provide a, um, a informational update on what we've done from a, um, we'll call it strategic infrastructure growth area, all the things that we've done over the last several years. Um, talk about some of our infill development strategies of um, how we can move forward. Are there some, uh, we think there's maybe some opportunities where we could um, add some additional tools as part of infill development, talk to you about that. And then finally, some of this growth strategy. And uh, Council Member Dockler reminded me also that it's just not South End development, but there's also um, other development, um, growth development in the city. So we wanna kind of capture what we've done. And I think we're gonna have two developers here uh, that wanna discuss with you 
some potential south end developments if they want. So we're going to let them kind of present what that looks like, uh, Council President Sandy. And then we come back after them and say, here's some of the infrastructure investment challenges. We're going to have to do that. And then really get your feedback. And it's really enough in the year in January we can keep coming back and, and hopefully by this springtime that, um, you know, we have a way forward on all this. So that we're just planning to kick that off uh, next week at the Committee of the Whole meeting. And then finally, um, I think uh, we all know we're going we're gonna to have a real flood this year in, in Grand Forks. And, and for the most part, even though we've had significant flooding, it's generally been a, um, uh, led by administration with um, engineering and inspections kind of leading the flood action plan. And then really with public works and waterworks crews implementing the strategy. And so it's been more of a routine kind of thing. And it'll probably be more uh, strategic thinking this time with uh, what's going to come at our way. And with all the groundwater that we have, you know, usually we're worried about, we're worried about our flood stations, of which, um, but we also have to probably worry about our, our wastewater stations, storm stations. So we're really going to have a lot of things to worry about um, this year. And so we're anticipating, a, um, I was talking to Mr. Grasser, our city engineer, a, an early forecast of what might happen. And so um, we want to get that to you sooner rather than later because I think this year we'll have to have more engagement with the city council on making some decisions where in the past it was more routine public works, water works type operations. There is also an, a meeting where uh, state agencies along with some federal agencies are making tours around the state and our time they're gonna come visit with us is next week Tuesday at 5.30 here in city council chambers. And so they're gonna have a variety of state agencies discuss you know, what state resources or federal resources they can um, um, bring to us at this point in time. And it's more of a community visit for Northeast North Dakota. So a lot more to come on that. And just so you know, I just wanna give you a warning. There's probably gonna be more engagement sooner rather than later with the city council. And we may have to make some decisions um, that we haven't had to make uh, in previously and get your engagement um, from the city council perspective on that. So that's all that I have, Mayor Brown. Thank you, Mr. Phelan. Item nine, Mayor and council member comments. Is Councilman Weigel on the phone? Nope, Ms. Dockler. I only have one comment. I got a couple of phone calls in the last few days um, that were specifically for the street and maintenance crews. Um, people just calling in to say thank you for all the work that you've put in for the snow removal and responding to calls about unshoveled walkways and those kinds of things. And so I wanted to pass it on to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weber. No comments, but a question, Mr. Phelan. Uh, would, it, would there be value in having Ms. Galtz come in from the uh, Emergency Preparedness Office to give us any sort of briefing that she might have or, or would there some, be someone else who could help us to understand what our responsibilities would be in, in the event of uh, the spring flood. I think, I think that's a good coordinating um, force and uh, she, she'll always be integrated into over our overall planning, yes. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I just wanna make sure everyone, you know, it's gotta be the city of Grand Forks has gotta um, take leadership roles on, on a lot of these activities is what I'm saying. But certainly there are coordinating roles that we all have. Thank you. Ms. Mock? Um, I guess that with that, Mr. Phelan, is there anywhere that people can go if they're worried about, you know, maybe what the flooding was like last fall and what that might be for the spring or recommendations? I know there's a lot of specifics that go into what you should do specifically for your home, but is there a place on the website or could they call engineering if they have questions about what people might recommend. Sure, Th that's very good because I, we've gotten some calls where people are concerned about, you know, um, wh what may come next. So I think uh, before we say kind of a strategy, we should uh, probably by early next week have a strategy on how to engage the city of Grand Forks um, sooner. I think there um, there's some meetings that are coming up on flood, flood insurance, informational sessions on what to do on that. And uh, we probably just need to choreograph ourselves. So who do you contact? And so we get things started off on, on the right foot. But, uh, and we're just trying to start now because I think we're gonna start getting some more information from, from the Weather Service and we wanna, be, we wanna be ahead of the game and not behind the game on, on those things. So we'll think about it this week and, and have a strategy uh, laid out for how people can engage the city of Grand Forks. And once we have that strategy, can we reach out to like the newspaper and different yeah. things so they publish that? It might even be good um, uh, if we have enough information to, um, Mr. Sandy put that on the committee of the whole meeting on Monday um, and have a conversation with U.S. City Council. Thank you. Council, Pres Council President Sandy. 
<laughs> oh, come on. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Linda, Congratulations again to Ms. David on the one-year anniversary. Welcome to Community Roadmap, yes. So I also want to thank Public Works for their Herculean efforts during our recent snow events and water events. And then I want to say um, public service has done well. And I want to also congratulate the welcoming roadmap for their one-year anniversary. And please drive safe because it's, it's really dangerous out there. So be aware of your surroundings. And with that, I need a motion to adjourn. Mr. Sandy motions. Ms. Docker quickly seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, we stand adjourned. Thank you. It's crazy out there. Thank you for being with us tonight. This meeting has been brought to you in part by... Let Grand Forks International Airport help you start your next vacation off on the right foot. Grand Forks International Airport offers flights to the sunny destinations of Orlando, Las Vegas, and Phoenix on Allegiant, and connections anywhere in the world through Minneapolis-St. Paul on Delta. Forget the hassle of long drives, parking nightmares, and stressful check-ins. The convenience of flying locally means less headaches and more time for you. Grand Forks International Airport. Your airport. Simply grand. Know what's in this box? Well, in case your crystal ball is broken, here's a hint. Safe, reliable energy, for starters, but there's also a commitment to this community. See, at Excel Energy, this is our hometown. So we're not just about making a living here, we're about living here. Oh, I wish I had wings. In our community, we're always delivering. Excel Energy, responsible by nature. Brantley Gilbert returns to Grand Forks. Fired Up Tour 2020 with special guests Chase Rice and Brandon Lay. Alaris Center, Saturday, May 2nd. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. The brand new album Fire and Brimstone drops everywhere October 4th. Brantley Gilbert. Live in concert. Check more at BrantleyGilbert.com.